the Colton Unified School District Board of Education on today, March 18th, 2021. Uh, at this time, Ms. Medina, will you please take roll call attendance of the board members? Yes. Board member Ibarra? Uh, here. Board member Haro? Here. Board member Flores? Here. Board member Thorin Ojeda? Here. Board member Sandoval? Here. Board member Fuentes? Here. Board member Adigin? Here. Thank you. Wonderful. And then we will go on to our next item, which is our Pledge of Allegiance. And at this time, I will ask our system superintendent, Ms. Ingrid Munsterman, to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Will do. Everyone, please rise. Place your hands over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mrs. Munsterman. Our first item on the agenda is item 1.3, adoption of the March 18, 2021, uh, as presented by the uh, by staff. Sorry, pull my calendar up here. We do have some amendments to the agenda uh, for today's meeting. And at this time, uh, staff is requesting that we amend closed session item 10.2, which is our personnel public employee item. Uh, to add four classified coaches. That would be inclusive of a uh, head JV softball coach girls two, head JV track co-ed, head varsity softball girls uh, two. Previously it had one. The addition of two certificated coaches, head varsity softball girls, head varsity swimming co-ed, and the addition of eight volunteer coaches, baseball boys three, soccer boys, softball girls two, and swimming co-ed two. Uh, Mr. Superintendent, are there any other additions or changes to the agenda that are requested? Uh, there are not. Okay. Um, with uh, so at this time, I look for a motion to adopt the agenda as amended or as recommended to amend. I should say. So moved. So moved. Two there. I think that was Board Member Thorne Ojeda, and was it Board Member Haro as well? Yes. Okay, so we'll do board member Tharno hit it with the motion and second by board member Haro. Uh, please roll call vote, Ms. Medina. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Thorin Ojeda? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Aridin. Yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you for that. That takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is our school showcase. And today we are highlighting Washington High School. I believe we have with us today uh, Principal Berner, who will introduce our student leaders for today's presentation. Yes. Uh, good evening, Board President Flores, board members. Superintendent Miranda, executive cabinet and members of the audience. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce to you tonight uh, two of our students that will our leadership students who will be presenting to you. They are Priscilla uh, Ruiz Campos and Delilah Martinez. Hi, I'm Priscilla Ruiz Campos. I'm a ninth grade student at Washington High School. Hi, my name is Delilah Martinez, and I'm a ninth grade student at Washington High School as well. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, and members of audience. Thank you for the opportunity to share some stuff we're doing at Washington High School this semester. Next slide, please. That's you, Delilah. I'm sorry, I accidentally closed out a tab. I, I need to fix that.
Okay. Um, so, empowerment. What is empowerment? For girls, this means being part of the conversation when decisions are being made. During this week, we focused on women's strength and how we can do anything a man can do. Next slide, please. We had four guest speakers throughout the week share how they've overcome obstacles in their life to get where they are now. Nina Torres shared her story, experience in our district shared her story and her experience in our district. Evelyn Rivas spoke about the obstacles in her personal life she had to overcome when she was in getting into radio and how important it was for her to never give up. Officer Martinez and Officer Bevelin shared their experience as female police officers in Colton and the strength and determination they carry with them every day. Next slide, please. We celebrated Black History Month in February with a, vo a virtual bulletin board contest. This celebration felt even more important to students this year after watching the events around Black Lives Matter take place all over the world. Next slide, please. Here are some submissions entered into the contest. Each one, imp each one imported and appreciated. Next slide, please. Last month, we virtually met Terrence Talley. We were able to connect with his story, and most importantly, he shared a powerful message with us. One of the messages being, you're not going through anything alone, I got your back. He said, someone always has your back, and you got the back of others. Next slide, please. Camila Vargas also met with us virtually to share a great volunteer opportunity. Charter Healthcare matches volunteers, volunteers up with hospice patients in addition to making a difference in someone's life. We can earn lots of volunteer hours and be considered for their program scholarship. Next slide, please. Our leadership class recently shared our second read aloud with the kinder students. Before winter break, we recorded Too Many Tamales. This semester, we read Solway for them, and we shared ways they could practice self-love even at their age. Please play the video. Give me just a second, please. Martinez and um, my pronouns are she, her. Thank you for having us. Hi, my name is Priscilla Reese and my pronouns are she, her. And today we will be reading Su Su, Su Wei by Lupita Nyong. Um, Su Wei was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Before we say goodbye, we would like to talk to you about the book. Su Wei is about loving ourselves. Why should we love ourselves? Su Wei's story shows us that you should love yourself no matter the color of your skin or race. As Su Wei says, real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Affirmations are a great way to love yourself. For example, I am kind to others. Don't compare yourself to others. Be yourself and don't change for anyone but yourself. Thank you again for allowing us into your classroom. Next slide, please. We've continued with PBIS SOAR books in distance learning. The SOAR books we earned are get tailed up and the students recently were able to cash in their books online for PBIS. Students store and pick students pick up the items from school. Next slide, please. 
Here are the students who earned principal's honor roll and honor roll last semester. You can see a presentation shared on Dr. Berner's virtual office where he recognizes these students. Next slide, please. Here are some ways counselors Ms. Love and Mr. G are reaching out to students during this time. Next slide, please. Counselors support students by offering academic and social emotional counseling and group counseling sessions. Next slide, please. Here we've included some details about the small group counseling sessions and presentations offered by the counselors. Next slide, please. Here we've, oh wait, sorry. Coming up next month, we will have our annual boys celebration, Boys to Men Through Adversity. Next slide, please. We've also published and shared with you our second issue of the Washington Times. We hope you enjoyed it. Next slide, please. Here are three of our graduating seniors this year from our independent study program. If you go to our school website, you can find a scrolling presentation of our high school seniors, and we hope to add more students as their pictures come in. Next slide, please. Thank you again for letting us share this with you. Do you guys have any, do you have any questions for us? Thank you for that presentation. Any questions from the board? Yes, I do. Uh, this is Mrs. Saragin. Uh, Priscilla and Delilah, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, it, it was very, very informative. I specifically like the uh, women's empowerment, uh, the list, the, the guests that you've had. I personally know Ms. Nina Torres. I know how amazing she is and the other uh, guests as well. So, you know, these are great role models for you. Um, but then I also noticed that, you know, at the, in the next slide, when you read to the um, elementary, I think you said kindergartners, now, you, now it's kind of switched roles and now you were the role models for these young girls, uh, for these young kids in, in the kindergarten class. And, uh, and you know, you, uh, shows a very good book, The Soul We uh, by Lupita Young, because it, you know, it talks about loving yourselves and and showing self confidence. So um, I really like that you're paying it forward by, you know, first of all inviting the women that you feel are good role models, and then in turn now you are being role models to these younger kids. So thank you, thank you for that. It's and I, I would encourage you to continue. There's a lot of good books out there um that you can continue and, and i'm sure because I, I know i do it i i call teachers and say can i reach your classroom and they i've never had anybody say no so i'm sure that you would be welcome to to um continue reading to students so um priscilla and delilah thank you so much for your presentation you did an amazing job thank you so much thank you for that. Uh, any other questions or comments from the board If I may, Board President, uh, this is Mr. Fuentes. Please. Uh, ladies, just wanted to also say thank you. Uh, great presentation. Uh, uh, I, I, like uh, Ms. Adegin said, uh, the girls' empowerment, that was amazing. Uh, great presentation. And then, like she said, you guys were role models for the uh, young kindergarten kids. And uh, continue to be role models to anyone that you see around you, your, your brothers and sisters, your cousins. And I encourage you to continue doing that. And I uh, just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for bringing this presentation to us. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Berner. Have a great team. Thank you for that, Board Member Quintus. Any other comments or questions from board members? Well, I want to echo the comments from my colleagues. Um, but Priscilla and Delilah did a wonderful job presenting the various programs and activities and you're proving yet again that even during these very difficult times where we're still in distance learning that that students are finding ways to connect with one another to have positive activities and to really make the best of a very difficult situation so we appreciate your presentation today and for the leadership and positivity that you are displaying at uh, at your school it means a lot to us and to certainly the students that are in your in your colleagues and your teachers so we appreciate your presentation great job
Thank you so much. Wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, our next item on the agenda, uh, item 3.0, is special presentations. And today we have our employee recognition. So uh, at this time, I'll turn it over to Ms. Lori Carlton, our Director of Human Resources, to go ahead and kick off this presentation. Thank you so much. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Miranda, and members of the public. The Human Resources Division would like to congratulate our January, February Employees of the Month. It's an honor to be selected among thousands of our dedicated employees. All of our nominees and award members show compassion, motivation, inspiration, and commitment to making our district the best it can be. Our first employee of the month is our classified employee of the month, and that is Carmen Fernandez. She is an IT specialist. Carmen always creates a safe and trusting environment where there are literally no dumb questions. She always has a great attitude and is so easy to work with. Her peers consider Carmen a breath of fresh air. We want to thank Carmen for all that she does for so many employees. Our second employee of the month is our certificated employee of the month, and that is Jan Morrison, CPS for Pupil Personnel Services. Jan, Jan exemplifies the four characteristics the district recognizes, respect, responsibility, caring, and trustworthiness. She's worked hard to reestablish trust with families who have experienced frustration or have felt that they have not been heard. Jan stands up for what she believes. She respects her colleagues and is an excellent collaborator. Her input and expertise are invaluable and she has been a joy to work with for the past 32 years. Thank you, Ms. Morrison, for your dedication to the CJUSD community. Our next employee of the month is our management employee of the month. The winner is Tanisha Jackson. She is the assistant principal at Ruth O'Harris Middle School. Mrs. Jackson is an excellent educator, instructional leader, advocate for all students at Ruth O'Harris. She devotes much of, much of her personal time to serve on committees, which she wholeheartedly believes will make a difference in our youth. She establishes strong, positive relationships with parents and students, allowing her to have an influence on the school community. Her ability to work with students to change behaviors is one of her many strengths. Mrs. Jackson truly cares. She views her responsibilities of being an administrator as a blessing and an opportunity to work with a diverse group of students and staff. Thank you, Tanisha. You are very much appreciated. And our final award winner for tonight is our education partner, Deputy Gary Dominguez, the SRO for Bloomington Com Community. Deputy Dominguez has developed, excuse me, demonstrated compassion in so many ways. One of the many activities he began is the project Keeping It Clean to help the school and community clean. Unsolicited, he consistently checks on the employees at his sites, whether it is a visit to the campus, a phone call, or a text to reassure them that he is there to support them in their efforts for the community's families. We are honored to recognize Deputy Dominguez for his dedication to the Bloomington community. His dedication to the students, staff, and community are recognized and appreciated. We want to congratulate all of our winners for tonight. We want to encourage the CJUSD staff to continue to acknowledge and nominate more outstanding employees in the future. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much for that, Director Carlton. And again, congratulations to all of the awardees we have some incredible partners here um, with the school district. Uh, so it's wonderful to not only acknowledge our staff, but those that partner with us like the Cameron County Sheriff's Department, our SROs, and of course, our incredible certificated classified and management team. So we have some awesome employees doing some amazing things. But we thank you for uh, allowing us to continue with the recognitions again, even in this distance learning and virtual environment. We really appreciate that. All right, this, go ahead, this takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is public comment. Uh, we do have a number of public comments this evening, and we will be turning that over to Ms. Medina to read out just to, as a point of information. Again, a reminder that public comment is limited to three minutes uh, per comment. Um, in instances where the comments are not completed within three minutes, uh, we apologize. We won't be able to extend beyond that. However, uh, please know that we have complete copies of all the public comments that have been submitted, and the board is provided with those comments in advance of each meeting. So we do have the complete comments. And again, when appropriate, we will have our staff respond where there's questions or concerns about specific subjects. So having said that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Ms. Medina to go ahead and begin our public comment portion. 
President Flores, if we could take a moment to switch our sign language interpreters, please. Absolutely. Alpen, I am not seeing Jessica on though. I don't know if she's available. She's having internet issues. Okay, are you so okay I'll to carry continue? On. Yes. Okay, thank you, sir. We're all set. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. <clears throat> Public comment number one, Jeanette Reyes, a parent and employee. Good evening, board members and superintendent. I have recently learned that our site is expected to return on site full time after spring break. This is a huge concern personally as a parent of young students within the district. Students and teachers will not be returning to campus. It seems that only office staff is unfairly being obligated to return, even though our community is still deemed unsafe for school reopening. It is much more imperative for for teachers and students to have slowly returned to campus and established some normalcy for our students. And yet that won't happen this school year as the teachers union fought against it. I understand that our limited office hours were of some inconvenience to some parents and yet the same argument can be made from a parent who works until 5 p.m. and our office closes at 4.30 p.m. I ask that you please reconsider the unfair inconsiderate change of office staff work schedules while remain on distance learning. I can assure you that we have worked hard to maintain our daily expectations and procedures. Having the flexibility of working from home and a shorter on-site workday offered us employees as parents the opportunity to support our children in person while they relearn from home. I ask that you please do not take that away as it will jeopardize our families and our mental well-being. Thank you for your consideration, concerned parent and employee. Public comment number two, Maribel Garcia, student. Hello, I wanted to give a comment and my opinion to extend the same graduation requirements waivers as they did to last year's graduates. Our current seniors deserve it. Thank you. Public comment number three, Daniel Martinez, student. Hello, I wanted to give my opinion and think it's only fair to give the seniors the same graduation requirements waivers as they did last year's graduates. Graduates, they deserve it with everything going on due to COVID. Public comment number four, Vanessa Canazales, student. Hello, I um, hello. I would like to extend the same graduation requirement waiver as they did to the class of 2020. I think our class of 2021 seniors deserve it. Public comment number five, Mario Sanchez. Dear CJUSD, we are running out of time. As of March 6, San Bernardino County is at 7.3 per 100,000 cases and rates of infection are dropping to a point that in-person activities, including awards, are justified. Please stop procrastinating. Please give the respective high schools in our district and the activities directors permission to move forward in planning an in-person graduation. We demand this as a community. If you can go to Disneyland, then there's no reason why we cannot have an in-person graduation in accordance with the county tier capacity. There is time. Allow each school to utilize the stadium at Grand Terrace High School if you are concerned about equity. Allow each high school to use GT High School's parking lot for a drive-in movie type graduation. Do whatever it takes. We have 1,000 signatures on the petition to have an in-person graduation. You have had a year to plan and months to show us that you support our seniors. Make the right decision. Sincerely, parent activist. Public comment number six, Joseph Weber, the first parent. Board, hello, I am writing to voice my displeasure with the restrictions being placed on the sports program you voted in to allow. Your restrictions are antiquated and putting our athletes at a huge disadvantage to schools and districts that have been much more forward thinking. If you think that providing an undisclosed amount of time for conditioning, then another undisclosed amount of time for distance practicing, and finally an undisclosed amount of time actually practicing is practical, you are mistaken. While all of this happens and the teams are restricted, when, it, when in school situations, the county is opening up more and more. If you cannot sit back and see the iterocracy in this, you are either blind, stupid, or just negligent in your duties. I'm sorry, but you are failing our athletes and the hard work that they have all strived for. This is one of the worst decisions that you have made, almost up there with closing schools for the remainder of the school year. 
As a concerned parent, I ask that you take the time to at least, in some aspect, try and explain the thinking behind such rigid restrictions. Please know that I'm speaking as someone that has spent some time with COVID-19 personally as I was in ICU and on a ventilator for almost 40 days when this school year started. I have been there and seen the damage that it can do, but I've also seen and experienced the mental damage that living in this sphere has caused. I get being cautious and safe, but I think that we have proven with our parent-sponsored events, you can provide safe opportunities for our students. I am concerned that you are sending a terrible message by cowering and living in fear and letting that fear control every decision. Please remember that you are all elected officials and if you would like to remain in office, you should take a little more time to get involved with the communities that you work for and listen to what is going on in those communities. Now, I hope that some of this might guide you in your next huge decision, and that is to hold traditional graduations. Options are available for other outdoor venues that can hold a large, larger number of people and provide more space to allow for social distancing. Please, I implore you not to take to please. I implore you not to take that away from these students. Thank you. Joseph Weber, the first. Public comment number 7. Douglas Gage, teacher. Good evening, board members and Superintendent Miranda. I am retiring after working in CJUSD for 33 years as a classroom teacher and at least two more as a substitute guest teacher. I'm planning my retirement and it would be extremely helpful if we could settle the contract salary before I am finished. I know that all the monies will, will be settled, but it would be very helpful if I knew in advance what my income will be. Thank you for letting me teach in your community for so many years. It has been an honor and a privilege. Douglas C. Gage, math teacher, CJUSD, 35 years. Public comment number eight, Martha Uribe, parents. My sixth grade student is promoting from Grant Elementary School. If a physical on-campus promotion ceremony is not allowed this year, I am asking you to consider allowing all schools in our district to have a drive through promotion to celebrate our students. Thank you for your consideration, Martha. Public comment number nine, Jennifer Elder, teacher. Good evening, Superintendent Miranda and board members. I would like to ask you to reconsider the contract salary negotiations for this year. As I see on the presentation for this evening, it shows no increase in pay for this year. As you are all well aware, teachers and staff have been working harder than ever to make distance learning a success for this past year, and you have continually honored us with your words of praise and encouragement. However, words only go so far. Why not honor us with a monetary token of a salary increase? As I retire this year from a district that has allowed me to grow professionally, I ask you to respectfully reconsider the negotiations of the contract salary in order to show that you do, in fact, respect your employees. Thank you for your time. Jennifer Elder, English teacher, Colton Middle School. Public comment number 10, Caitlin Town, teacher. Good evening, board members, district officials, and community members. I'm writing you tonight about my extreme concern over the use of the online program Ingenuity, Ingenuity as a proposed summer school curriculum for secondary students this upcoming summer. As an active member of Secondary Curriculum Council, I know that the members of our council were very cautious and specific when we reviewed and recommended Ingenuity be used as a curriculum for the facilitated online learning program for the 2020-21 school year. Only this choice was made as a council to, replay, to replace the previous program, Odysseyware, and was done so due to the outstanding circumstances brought upon our district in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. In short, Edgenuity was meant as a quick fix in a time when we as a district were not able to provide a better option. After over a year of teachers learning to create lessons digitally, we now have, much better, we now have a much better option. In my capacity as Jobaka Middle School's elected curriculum council representative, I have surveyed the staff and my site about this issue and the results are overwhelmingly in favor of allowing teachers to create and teach their own curriculum to meet the needs of our summer school students, as has been the practice in previous years. There are several concerns from my staff in terms of how the use of such a program would make the students feel dis disconnected and unmotivated, which would quickly discourage them from attending summer school. 
Students will become easily bored by the program because of the repetitive nature of the lessons. Edgenuity will not be able to provide the type of individual support that many of our students who will attend summer school will need to be successful. The Edgenuity program is almost completely self-paced for students and requires little to no synchronous learning with the teacher and completely lacks the ability for our students to collaborate with each other, which is fast becoming one of the most valuable and important skills for students to be successful in the future. A further concern is the fact that many teachers who have signed up to work summer school have little to no experience using Edgenuity and asking teachers to be trained in yet another program after over a year of distance learning will be overwhelming to many teachers who are finally finding their footing in creative, substantive, and engaging online lessons of their own with the help of the vast library of online programs students are already used to using in their virtual classrooms, Nearpod, Desmos, Edpuzzle, etc. Finding time to train teachers last minute and also getting students used to yet another online program such as Ingenuity after this unprecedented and unchallenging time, eh, challenging year is a recipe for disaster. For all these reasons, I ask that you as a board reconsider the district's de decision to use Edgenuity as a summer school curriculum and instead allow our teachers a chance to use their professionalism and vast subject matter knowledge to create meaningful and rich lessons that will allow students to gain not only important knowledge and skills, but also boost their confidence and well-being after the most trying year of many of our lives. I will end with a quote from one of my staff who simply states, any online curriculum is less effective than the teacher themselves. Thank you for your time this evening. Caitlin Town, math teacher at Joe Baca Middle School. Public comment number 11. Angel Alvarez Cordano. Dear Honorable Dr. Miranda, President Flores and CJUSD board members. As a Bloomington High School graduate class of 2020, I am thankful for the compassion that Dr. Heidi Strick Werda extended to me during my last year as a senior. I would not be where I am today without her help. I came to Bloomington High School as a newcomer. I was a dedicated student in Mexico wanting to learn the English language, yet my experience was not a positive one here. I felt discriminated against from the beginning. I was judged on my inability to speak English. I had teachers who failed me because they said my English was not good. I almost gave up because I did not have the support of people in power. I had complained, but no one would help me, and those who tried met me met with resistance. I was not the only English learner to experience this. When Dr. Strickwerda arrived at Bloomington High School, I found that she was in charge of the English learners program. I met with her and she immediately gave me the confidence. She, get, she took the time to speak to my father and me. Dr. Strickwerda also met with my peers with the same situation. Through her determination to change things and make us feel as important and equal to other students, we were able to graduate. I am currently attending UC Merced. This is all possible because of someone like Dr. Strickwerda. Bloomington High School is very fortunate to have her, and I know that students like me will be in good hands because she will inspire them to succeed. Thank you. Sincerely, Angel Alvarez Guadano. Public comment number 12. Sonia Topkins, employee. Dear Dr. Miranda, President Flores, and members of the board, after 33 years as an employee of the Colton Joint Unified School District and 20 years at Bloomington High School, I had found, found myself still addressing a few crucial issues that had not been resolved in the past until the arrival of Dr. Heidi Strickwerda. There are some of you who may remember when my husband, Harry Tompkins, and I stood before you in defending the civil rights of our English learners and their families. Though those days are just a memory, the struggle remains. Dr. Strickwerda arrived at Bloomington High School during a difficult time, a time of despair and treachery. When some of the staff became complacent, progress became a prolonged stalemate. Did we need to be shocked? Most definitely. In education, we cannot possibly believe that we have reached our maximum potential. Unfortunately, those who have been accustomed to a lack of accountability are the same group who intimidate others into backing down from innovative methodology, including administrators. 
Yet Dr. Strickwerda has a positive and optimistic outlook on our challenges and is not one of those who is easily intimidated. She is one to believe in. Failure is not an option. We must service a multitude of students, each with specific needs. Whereas the old mentality may have been sink or swim. It is a law that protects our English learners from certain teachers failing them simply because they do not speak English. Has this been evident in this day and age? Yes, it has. In its 1974 decision in Lowell versus Nichols, the United States Supreme Court upheld OCR's 1970 memo. The basis for the case was the claim that the students could not understand the language in which they were being taught. Therefore, they were they were not being provided with an equal education. The Supreme Court agreed, saying that, quote, there is no equality of tr treatment merely by providing students with the same facilities, textbooks, teachers, and curriculum. For students who do not understand English are effectively foreclosed with any meaningful education, end quote. Dr. Strickwerda was not going to allow our English learners' rights to be violated. In fact, it is because of her leadership, knowledge of the law, and compassion for our students as well as their families that allegations did not reach attorneys and advocates because Dr. Strickwerda stepped in to support these students. As a language assistant who works directly with these students, I was hired to provide the assistance that the law prescribes. Discrimination is not a word that plays well in any situation, but I felt this pressure not only for our English learners, but for me as well. Dr. Strickwerda was the only one willing to listen not only to my plea, but the plea of many students along with their families. Some of our senior ELs were blessed to be able to graduate through the assistance of Dr. Strickwerda, who was instrumental in mo motivating these students to never give up. I am also pleased to share that these students were grateful for her support in making their dream a reality of becoming the first in their family to graduate in the United States. If Public comment number 13, Harry Tompkins, community member. Dear Dr. Miranda, Mr. Flores, and members of the CJUSD board, I am in support of Dr. Heidi Strickwerda and all she has accomplished since her arrival to BHS. She is a part of the strength in bringing forth positive changes. If you have not had a personal conversation with her about her vision for improving education and what success may look like under her direction, I ask that you take some time to do this so you may also understand why she is supported in her role. Please table this matter until you can have more clarity in this situation. Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Harry J. Tompkins, Community Advocate. Public comment number 14, Lisa Villa, employee. Good evening, Dr. Miranda and board members. Life goes on for everyone. It seems like it's business as usual for you. While a few of our Colton parents were left to pick up the pieces for our seniors from the decision you, were, you, you made collectively to continue distance learning for the remainder of the 2020-21 school year, it's clear to us that our district does not care about our community. Many parents and staff have made it clear how unhappy we were with your decision, but that didn't matter to any of you. No one has reached out to our seniors, offered any assistance. You have done absolutely nothing to reach out. Instead, you went about living your best life, and actually some of you are out and about and not safe at home, which contradicts your opinion that our kids are safer at home because some of you are not. If you choose to be in these leadership roles, you must lead by example. Where are all of our senior leaders? Our seniors or any parents have yet to see them. We did see many teachers and staff that work at completely different schools that have chose to safely reach out to them. They came to get their car washed while safely remaining in the car. Our seniors thought they would see all the people that were supposedly heartbroken for them. They did not see one of them. We even had the Grand Terrace community members come by, our Colton Mayor, Nickelodeon owner Gary Grossich, and the Air Strong Foundation pastors, priests from their churches, etc., but no one from their school or district. It's too late now to show us that our seniors matter to you. We have managed to rally up with our Colton community and many others have stepped up to the plate. Our kids have seen who who really has their back. If the shoe wear if the shoe fits, wear it. If you know, know that you have made a difference in our in children's lives, then my comments should not bother you. It all starts at the top and who they hire to lead our schools. 
our county has moved into the red zone and it was easier to decide to continue in distance learning for the remainder of the year and try to make it look like it was ready it was for the safety of students and staff because you knew that the schools were nowhere near ready no plans for any of the different levels of tiers, nothing. You gave us athletics only to throw us some crumbs because us parents were complaining, but you didn't want to. At our athletic meeting, we were told that our kids were not allowed to wear the Colton attire, not even a hat, while walking to practice down Rancho Avenue because they didn't want to have to answer any questions to community members passing by and seeing them possibly not wearing a mask as they walked down the street and those kids would be identifiable as Colton High students. Are you serious? The reason wasn't for safety concerned. It, it was because they didn't want to have to hear it when in fact they should be the ones defending the students that they supposedly miss and care about. Instead, they are worried about having to do legwork with a few possible complaining community members. Where is the dedication to our kids? It seems like this is a business and not a place where student success is trying to be achieved. The countless events, comments, and situations our seniors have endured during their time at Colton High is disheartening. Our kids, including myself, know who they can go to that truly care about student success. Respectfully, Lisa Villa. Public comment number 15, Betty Heck Tyler, community member, grandparent. Dear school board members, I am writing as a grandparent, community member, and child care provider. I have spent the last year working and watching children's mental and physical health become affected by this pandemic. Due to the lack of social interaction and sport activities, everyone is being affected. By allowing this one-time waiver for sports to be played at a 2.0 grade point average, it would allow student athletes the opportunity to engage in extracurricular activities. Many students have been struggling with online learning, and these are good students. This may be the last time many of these students will be able to participate in a team activity, and they have looked forward to this final year. By giving student athletes this one-time opportunity, they will li likely be motivated to finish out this academic year even stronger. Thank you for your consideration. It takes a village, and I love ours. Betty Heck Tyler. Public comment number 16, Mike P. Parent. Dear board members of CJUSD, I am a proud parent of a student in Bloomington High School. I am proud of my student. I am proud of Mr. Gorda because she really tries to start communication with Spanish speaking parents. She cannot be excused from an assistant principal. I know she is improving things at the school. My other child had a lot of issues when she was there before and cried a lot. I think my child with this with his EL teacher and Mr. Gorda's program, he will succeed better than my daughter. She is a great person. I don't know why people do not keep her. Please stay open minded. Thank you very much, Mike P. Click comment number 17. Veronica Gaithan, parent. Good evening, CJUSD and members of the board. My name is Veronica and I'm a parent to children in CJUSD, specifically a proud parent of a senior at CHS. I am writing in regards to plans in place or in motion to honor these seniors in your district. As each student is important, the focus in my opinion should be boosting the morale of, of these seniors. We had an entire year, the class of 20 is unfortunately a memory of the past. At that time, the virus was new and there were, lot, there were lots of unknowns. We cannot fail the class of 21. We have had time for preparations to be done to safely acknowledge, recognize, and celebrate these seniors. I have spoken to the principal and ASB director. I understand everything has to be sent from the district and approved by the board. Now that we are in the red tier as a county, surrounding districts have their students transitioning to in-person learning. Do we have any plans for our seniors to have some sort of recognitions that does not involve a drive-through graduation? Theme parks are reopening next month. Do we have any plans in motion to boost the morale of these seniors? Students can provide their own transportation, meet at the designated location, and safely have fun and celebrate each other while still abiding by CDC guidelines. Has any of this even been discussed? If the CDC guidelines only permit for drive through graduations in our county, can we start a plan of action to safely have a ceremony at a big enough venue while safety, while safely practicing social distancing? 
Can we take drive through graduations off the option list and look into a drive in style graduation where families can stay in their cars and watch while the students can be practicing social distancing outside and still be able to have a ceremony and walk? There has been many teams created to assist with the process of returning to in person learning. Can we put a team together that will come up with plans for these last few months these seniors have? They lost their entire year. Never once will they step on campus again. This is their first major, major education recognition and sadly for some students, this will be their only. Yes, they have had have promoted from grade to grade, but think about your senior year or that of your children's. The rallies, homecomings, college tours, football games, grad night, prom, etc. The year, the day that every student has a goal in elementary and through high school, their senior year just gone. Public comments. Number 18, Lorena Nichols, parent. Dear board members, I'd like to make one last plea to the board to waive the CASP testing for this year. There are several districts in California that are waiving the test, Sacramento and Menifee, to name a few. It is in the best it is in the students' best interest to have a consistent schedule of learning rather than weeks of stress testing on a modified test that can only provide modified results. It's better that students continue to learn new materials and not lose out on class time with their teacher. It's in the best interest of the teachers to remain with their entire class and prepare them for the next grade. It's in the parents' best interest. Parents need to feel secure and protect the privacy of their homes and personal computers, laptops, or other devices. Just yesterday, many students were asked to install a secure browser on their personal devices to do a practice test. There was no time given to gain parental consent, just instructions how to download because it was being administered that period. Some parents have concerns of adults having access and full control of students' cameras and mics on in our homes. It is an invasion of privacy. For that reason, it's also in the best interest of the district to waive the test this year. I've recently been to numerous live district meetings and school board meetings. There is always a glitch. Some people can't get connected. Some people can't be heard. Sometimes when there is supposed to be a picture, there is a black screen. Sometimes there is no sound, but we see mouths moving. All these things happen to adults in district meetings. Please now imagine a teacher trying to facilitate this test to children in a live meeting. So many things can go wrong. I watched it happen yesterday. Kids scrambling because they couldn't connect that turned to stress and panic. We should not be subjecting our kids to the stress of unnecessary testing this year. I know many are opting out of the CASP and many more are planning on doing it after spring break. There will be iReady diagnostics, benchmarks, and final exams to gauge this year's growth. Let's stick with those tests minus hot mics and cameras in the home. Let's wait until next year when we we're on campus and things are back to a normal environment for state testing. Please make a decision like other districts in California have done and waive the standardized testing this year. Sincerely, Ms. Nichols and concerned parents. Public comment number 19, Benjamin Roldan, teacher. Good afternoon, board members of the CJUSD Board of Education. On behalf of the many teachers at BHS, we are fed up with the toxicity of our campus. We appeal to you today to please reconsider your acceptance of Dr. Strickwerda's involuntary resignation as assistant principal of our school. Dr. Strickwerda arrived at our campus when we most needed her. She is a personality that BHS desperately needs. She is not afraid to fix what needs fixing. She is a true leader who can take on resistant figures who just want to oppose everything, especially when it comes to changes. She has truly demonstrated what real leadership looks like as she genuinely cares about everyone and is considerate of all people's opinions, but also knows when others are simply being uncooperative and offensive without reason. She is not passive when bullying occurs among the adults on our campus, and she does not ignore it the way other administrators have done continuously and for several years. She is unbiased no matter what anyone says. She has demonstrated true kindness and caring for our students of all ethnic and racial and racial backgrounds. She is very open-minded and she encourages all of us to be the best we can be. She is brave. She has been, she has seen firsthand the meanness that some of us have to encounter at our site even while we are in a virtual world. 
Our site is mentally draining because of the oppression we receive from other teachers. We suffer consequences for wanting to speak up, but Dr. Strickwerda does not tolerate it. She maintains a level of professionalism that some adults on our campus have ignored. For too long, there have been teachers that want to silence us for not agreeing with their opinions and points of view. Many of us want to transfer to another site or another district altogether. It would be further detrimental to us if Dr. Strickwerda was relieved of her position at BHS. We need her and more leaders like her to restore the camaraderie that once existed on this site. Please reconsider accepting her resignation and reevaluate the circumstances surrounding her submission. Thank you in advance. Public comment number 20. Chastity Kotze, parent. Good evening, board members. Thank you for your time and dedication. I want to take a moment to express the negative impact of the upcoming CAST testing. There are multiple reasons this test should have already been waived. Most of us may agree this year has had an incomprehensible in impact on the emotional well-being of both teachers and students. Waiving state testing could have at least been a small relief to unwarranted stress and pressure. Teachers should not have to spend an extreme amount of valuable class time for a test that will have inconclusive results and is not mandatory by the state. It's not just the average time this test takes away from education, but the added time it takes for each teacher to be sure the students can access the test virtually. This causes an unjustified amount of lost hours of instruction and intense frustration. Teachers have had plenty of obstacles through distance learning and should not have to deal with state testing. It's time to give teachers a break and let them teach. Furthermore, let the students learn for the sake of learning. They do not need the added pressure and frustration of inconclusive state testing. Also, the invasion of privacy should be greatly considered. All parents should be made aware that students will be required to have a monitoring system downloaded into their device. Students will be required to be seen and heard at all times. The security of this monitoring system is, debate, is debatable and parents should be informed. In my opinion, the CASP test should have already been waived so teachers and students could enjoy their much deserved spring break. Thank you for your consideration, Chastity Kotze. And that concludes public comments. Thank you so much for that, Ms. Medina. And again, thank you for everyone that took time to submit their comments to the board for tonight's meeting. We appreciate hearing from the community. And um, again, where appropriate, we will make sure that staff follows up on some of the more specific items that have been um, submitted. All right, this takes us to our next item on the agenda, which uh, is our administrative presentations. We have a couple of presentations today. The first one, item 5.1, is our 2021 elementary school summer school plan from our Ed Services Department. So I will invite Dr. Peterson to please lead off this presentation, our Assistant Superintendent of Education Services. President Flores, can we pause for just a second? Sure, sure thing. Uh, Alpin, are we able to get Jessica back on yet? Do you know? No, I've been informed that a Vicky will be joining us. Okay, I will be on the lookout. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're all set, thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Um, it is my pleasure tonight to introduce my elementary director um, who is going to present our elementary summer school plan or, or, and would also like to thank him and his um, committee that he put together for the work they've done on this plan. Uh, they've had a limited amount of time and have done a great job putting putting this together. And so I'll turn that over, turn this over at this point to um, Dr. Seidheider. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Miranda, and all those who have logged in this beautiful evening. This evening, I'm pleased to present to you a wonderful opportunity we are planning for our elementary students. Starting June 8th, we are planning to offer an exciting adventure for our elementary students. Before I share, uh, sorry, I apologize. Uh, Mr. Pinnell, can we have the presentation displayed? Thank you. Before I um, go over the details of the plan, I want to share uh, what brought us uh, to this point. Next slide, please. As we all know, the pandemic has devastating impact on our students. We see that in many of the communities around us. 
I want to share with you some data uh, that illustrates the devastation all throughout US. In a recent in-depth study by NBC News, it, they found emergency rooms have seen a 24% increase in mental health related visits from children ages five to 11 compared to last year. Food banks have been slammed with hungry families and as an estimated 7 million children, many largely cut off from free school lunches are now in danger of not having enough to eat. That's an increase of six more million six million more hungry children. And average students in grades three through eight who took a math assessment in fall 2020 scored up to 10 percentile points behind students who took the same test last year. Many districts are reporting that number of students who have missed at least 10 percent of classes have doubled this year. Next slide, please. Keeping all this in mind, we are proposing an elementary summer camp for our K-5 students, along with interactive and engaging at, at academic intervention. The camp will also focus on social emotional support for our students. The four weeks will follow a camping slash nature theme to keep our students motivated and engaged. Hence the name Adventure. Next slide, please. Dr. Heider, can we pause for just a moment, please? Sure. Thank you. Alvin, I see we have Vicki Kennedy on. Do you know if she is a sign language interpreter? I believe so. Vicki, are you able to turn your camera on? Yes, my camera's on, I believe. Thank you so much. Give me just a second, please. Okay, we're all set. Thank you, Dr. Heider. Thank you. Next, next slide, please. So we will have seven campsites uh, divided by the three cohort. Uh, so just to illustrate, uh, Zimmerman and Crestmore students will go to Zimmerman Elementary. Sycamore Hill students will uh, go to DRC. Uh, sorry, Sycamore Hill students along with DRC and Hurupa Vista students will go to Sycamore Hills and so on. Next slide. So who will be our lucky campers? These will be students who are not engaging or participating in distance learning regularly. Students who are engaging but not making adequate progress, as well as students who are not demonstrating adequate academic progress. Next slide, please. This will be the schedule for our for our camp. Uh, teachers will start the mornings with social emotional learning and end with a project or engagement activity. At the end of the day, they will pick up their lunch before they go home. Next slide, please. We will keep our uh, campsite sizes small, so there will be 12 students in kinder, first, second, and third grade classrooms and 15 students in fourth and fifth grade classrooms. This follows our hybrid safety plan. Next slide, please. Along with smaller class sizes, I also want to mention all the safety protocols developed by the hybrid planning team will be followed. These include uh, uh, students will be spaced at least four to six feet apart. Uh, there will be uh, no sharing of equipments or supplies. Face coverings must be worn by all staff and students and several other uh, protocols that have been developed by the hybrid safety team. Next slide, please. This will be our curriculum uh, for our adventures. Uh, some of the examples, engaging examples include project based learning featuring different aspects of adventure theme grade level specific standards chosen to address learning loss, hands-on activities to culminate the theme of each week, social emotional learning through Nearpod, a virtual field trip of national parks and more. Next slide, please. Before I uh, take your questions, I want to extend a big thanks to our wonderful planning team 
They collaborated beautifully uh, and came up with some great ideas of the plan, including the name. And I do want to quickly mention uh, Michelle Lopez and Eliza Day because their names, unfortunately, were not listed here, but they were a very in important piece of the planning committee. Thank you. I'll be happy to answer another, any questions. Great. Thank you, Dr. Heider. Uh, at this time, uh, questions from board members. Mr. Flores, I have one. Please. Dr. Heider, I, for clarification, you have cohorts of schools and you have two or three schools listed. And then when you put, you include the class sizes for like kindergarten is at 12 students. Is that 12 students total for the camp or 12 students from each school? No, we are hoping to have three to four classes in each uh, school. So each of the seven sites, that's oh. our goal. Okay, so that, if that's we get, we are, yeah, thank, thank you. you. I also, when they have the virtual learning, are those children going to be responsible then for bringing their laptop each day to school or will they be, will it, that just be shown in, you know, by the teacher uh, on an overhead or something, they won't be using their own computers. So our goal is to do this camp, although everything will be in person for this camp. So uh, one thing we may consider doing is that the first day when they bring their uh, Chromebook, maybe we will have them leave it at the school site, or if they want to take it back, we just have to make sure they bring it uh, the next day to school. The next, the next day or the next? They are coming every day. The students are attending every day for 18 days. Right, so they'll there will be times when they'll be using their Chromebook from home. Uh, not uh, no. So all our uh, summer activities are in school in person. If they want to do something at home, that's optional. No, <laughs> I'm not making myself clear. Right. My cons my question is: Will children be bringing their Chromebooks back and forth each day? And if so, how will we handle that? I thought they weren't bringing backpacks to school and how are they going to get those transported without getting lost on the way to and from? So Dr. Heider, if I can jump in. Sure, please. Um, because these Chromebooks are, are, are uh, assigned to them, they will, yes, they will be bringing them back and forth. Just as, as they're going to have to do during the school year. Okay, so they will be able to have take backpacks to school then and bring them in those. I'm thinking about little ones. They 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 lose anything they have in their hand except the backpack on the shoulder. We'll have parameters for what they what they can and can't bring. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, board member Thorne Mehta. Other questions from board members? Yes, I had a question about um, transportation. Please, yes, that again. Yeah, I just can you explain how that would work? Yes, we have, uh, we are working with uh, the transportation department. We will be providing transportation. Students will be picked up from their regular site as well as there will be additional stop uh, at the school sites where uh, students, uh, where there is, there will not be a camp. So yes, there will be transportation provided for all students. And what's the window? What are the dates? You have the dates set yet? Uh, so June seventh, we are leaving that as a prep day for teachers, so that because they may be teaching in other classrooms and other school sites. So June seventh will be a prep day for our teachers and uh, camp uh, administrators, and students will attend from June eighth through July first. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Adeline. Other questions uh, from board members. I had a question, Dr. Heider, with respect to the selection of the students, obviously we're going to identify students that would really benefit greatly from having the additional um, the additional support. Is that decision, number one, is that decision going to be made at each site level with uh, the principal and teachers for their respective grade levels? Correct. The teachers will uh, make the decision and um, send the information to the principals and Based on the numbers, number of classrooms we can offer, then the principals will decide how many they can send to the camp. So yes, it will be a site decision, but we have the planning committee has come up with criteria for teachers and principals to make this decision. And if, let's say, for example, I imagine there would be a list. If, for example, a family is invited to participate and they opt not to, which I, this is a voluntary program, obviously, 
will we be able to go to the next on the list, so to speak, so that we can give every every student, every family the opportunity to participate um, based on that priority list? Should there be an opening? Absolutely. So, uh, for instance, if uh, if we get like a list of hundred students from a school site recommended by teachers, and we can only apply seventy, then uh, if anybody from that 70 students don't accept then we will go on to the 71st 70, 72nd and so on to the next level of students okay thank you so in that in that sense we're going to do our best to fill every seat possible so we're maximizing this program uh, as much as possible absolutely okay great thank you those are uh, all the questions i had other questions from board members i did have one more uh, please yeah, um, and this is um, since we're on the subject of summer school, um, and this is for elementary. Back in January, we we approved um, we we approved uh, the secondary summer school program, and at that point, it was virtual. Um, is there a, considering its consideration given to also doing this in person? And uh, you may not have the answer for that now, but I just would like to see if that is a possibility. So Bertha, I can jump in on, on that question. And uh, at this point, all the planning is, is done moving forward with the secondary. And so uh, it is gonna continue to be uh, virtual. Um, and part of that is uh, we are trying to um, provide support for students, uh, especially when you talk about the high schools um, to complete as many credits as possible um to make up for some of the loss the last uh two year, last year and a half okay okay so oh, please sorry. go ahead sorry Ms. Huggy. please yeah okay so that's okay that's fine thank you any other questions for, uh for staff from board members i have a question jen this is frank please mr barrow Thank you, Dan. And uh, first of all, I just want to thank uh, both uh, Ms. Pearson and uh, Mr. Hyde for the presentation. And I think it's uh, wonderful that we're going to give uh, and have this opportunity for many of our elementary school students. Uh, and uh, by putting uh, uh, the program and setting it up as you're presenting it, I think that it's going to entice a lot of students to want to get back to the classroom even during summertime. My question is that uh, upon approval of, of the summer school program, how soon will we be notifying our parents uh, of, uh, uh, of their students' enrollment or potential enrollment into this program? Uh, Mr. Ibarra, we have a timeline planned on, uh, we have to do several things. So uh, once it's approved, the first thing for me will be hiring um, ad administrators for those so that they can take over some of the loads from me of the planning. And then we will be uh, posting um, uh, job postings for teachers and that will be critical. We need a certain number of teachers to fill all the classes. So depending on how many teachers are willing to work the, this summer we will decide how many students we can invite and once that decision is made that's when we will start inviting uh, parents uh, so informing parents about so most likely it will be sometime uh, the third or fourth week of april when we'll notify parents and, and the only reason i bring that up mr Hyder, is that i know that parents start planning uh, for vacations and they start planning for other activities and just want to give them uh, enough notice, if, you know, if the opportunity does present itself to their individual children and, and the students. And uh, as we start, as you start looking to hire for these positions that you've mentioned, uh, I assume they're all going to be in-house. And uh, if uh, uh, we're unable to get enough in-house. Do you search out of the district? I am hoping we will have enough uh, in-house folks who can uh, do the job. I'm reluctant. We ha we have we will evaluate depending on how many folks apply because uh, 
if we hire somebody from outside, then we'll have to train them because this is only 18 days and we want to make sure that the, what they're doing, it's very well planned and we don't spend timing, time training new teachers or people who are not familiar with our district's uh, system. We will consider that in a, if needed, but I'm reluctant to hire outside our district at this point. Okay, well, thank you for answering my questions. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, any other questions from board members? Well, thank you, Dr. Haida, for, uh, for the presentation. Uh, it's exciting to be able to engage our students in a creative way over the summer. Obviously, any opportunity to connect, particularly with the students that have struggled through distance learning is something that we uh, want to encourage. So I really appreciate the presentation and putting together this program with your team. So. Thank you and thank you, Dr. Peterson Puel, for your leadership and all your and all your staff, the entire team that helped put together this program. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, well, this takes us to our next item on the agenda, which is item 5.2, our second interim presentation. Uh, this is a presentation from our business services division. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Mr. Jensen to lead off this presentation. Well, thank you and good evening, President Flores, members of the board. Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, CJUSD staff, and our honored guests. I am Rick Jansing, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services. And I, along with our Director of Fiscal Services, Maria Amanda Sarabia, will present to you tonight the 2020 21 second interim report with financial activity through January 31st, 2021. Next slide, please. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Miranda, Executive Cabinet, Staff Members, and Community Members. It is my pleasure to be here tonight to present the second interim report, which provides the latest look at the budget and actuals and projects financial activity through June 30th. Tonight, we will also be looking at enrollment projections, the updated multi-year projections, components of ending fund balance, and cash flow projections. Next slide, please. The board must certify the district's projected financial outlook as positive will meet, qualified may not meet, or negative will be unable to meet the financial obligations for the current and two subsequent fiscal years. Next slide, please. Based on the current assumptions and information, the district's projected financial outlook is positive. Since the district is expected to meet its financial obligations for the current and two subsequent fiscal years. Next slide, please. We have seen this slide before in the first interim report. This slide shows enrollment and ADA trends for the past five years with projections for the next four. The top line represents enrollment with actuals in black and projections in orange. The bottom line represents the P2 ADA as of April each year. The middle line in blue shows funded ADA. Now, this is normally the ADA that is funded on the higher of the current or prior year ADA. And this is uh, uh, the LCFF state apportionment base each year. As you follow the blue line, you may notice that the gray line in 1920, the blue line in 2021, and 21-22 are all on the same point, meaning that school districts are held harmless for their ADA for these three years, as provided in the 2021 State Budget Act, which is great for districts in declining enrollment like Colton. However, as you continue to follow the blue line to 22-23, you will see a large drop in funded ADA, which drops by around 1,250 ADA. Now, this is the ADA drop that is finally realized after three years of being held harmless. The actual P2 ADA will keep dropping until 2022 when the hold harmless protection stops, and then we revert back to the higher of current or prior year ADA for funding purposes. When we look at the multi year projection in five more slides, we will see the effect on LCFF revenues in 22 23. Next slide, please. This pie chart represents the total general fund revenues for the fiscal year. 
including both restricted and unrestricted sources. At quick glance, LCFF is our largest revenue source at 73%, followed by federal revenues at 16%, state revenues at just over 7%, and local revenues at just under 4%. Next slide, please. Since the time the board approved the first interim report back in December, the district has made more revisions to the budget, which are reported here through January 31st. Mainly for income, revision, two revisions were made. We trued up the LCFF revenues uh, in, due to an increase of $2.4 million based on an updated unduplicated pupil percentage rate of seven, uh, 87% for this year and an increase of $1.6 million in CARES Act funds that we received from the County of San Bernardino. Next slide, please. This pie chart represents the total projected expenses for 2021. The general fund is projected to have 300, uh, 311 million in expenses with salaries and benefits making up 75% of the general fund expenditures while the remainder is attributed to other operating expenditures. Next slide, please. Since first interim, there has been an increase of 900,000 due to COVID related expenses. These expenses are covered by one time CARES Act funding. Next slide, please. The multi-year projections are only as good as their underlying assumptions. As discussed earlier, ADA is held constant based on 1920 through 2021 and 2022 fiscal years, but here we show the projected P2 ADA for each year, not the funded ADA that we've discussed earlier. We will discuss the effect of the decline in ADA uh, in 22-23 in the next slide. The rest of the multi-year projection factors include projected rates for the unduplicated pupil percentage, lottery, STRS and PERS employer rates, rates for the mandated block grant per ADA, and average projected increase in health welfare benefits from year to year. Next slide, please. Mr. Jensen, do you mind if we pause for a minute? Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. This slide shows the multi year projections for the current year and two subsequent fiscal years. As Rick mentioned earlier, we will be losing 250 ADA 2223, which will impact the LCFF revenue by 13 million in that year. At second interim, we have corrected the projected COLAs in 2122. 2223. As a result, the loss of LCFF funding in 2223 will only be 5 million instead of the 13 million that was initially projected. In 2122, we are also removing the one time CARES Act funding and expenditures. Looking at 2021, we are projecting a deficit of 3.6 million and an ending fund balance of 40.2 million. In 2122, we see a surplus of 2.1 million with an ending fund balance of 42.3 million. In 2023, we see a deficit in the amount of 4.7 million and an ending fund balance of 37.5 million. These projections do not include any potential negotiated agreements. Next slide, please. This chart represents in graphical form the multi year projections and the effect that deficit spending has on ending fund balance. The first column in teal represents the beginning fund balance. The revenues are represented by the orange column and the expenses by the gray column. The ending fund balance is shown by the short yellow column. As you can see, expenses are higher than revenues in fiscal years 2021 and 22 23 resulting in deficit spending and a decrease to the ending fund balance. In 
2022, we see that revenues are greater than expenses, resulting in a surplus and therefore an increase to the ending fund balance. Next slide, please. The state has continued to impose uh, deferrals to our LCFF state aid for the months of February through June. These deferrals have a negative impact on our cash flow situation. These deferrals are scheduled to be repaid in the months of July through November next year. One piece of good news is that the state included in our cash flow projections the repayment of a $12 million accrual for LCFF last year in 1920. So this $12 million is a reduction in LCFF state aid last year due to the receipt of $12 million in redevelopment agency property tax dollars at the end of last year. So as a result, the deferrals have decreased from the original projection of $61 million down to just under $40 million. Therefore, the TRAN amount is decreased from the $54 million we reported needed in the first interim to $39.7 million, which will reduce our borrowing costs, mainly in interest payments of about $50,000 from original projections. We are projecting an ending cash balance this year of $15 million. Next slide, please. Next slide. To summarize, the 2021 second interim presents a positive certification. The district will continue to closely monitor enrollment and ADA, as well as year-to-date revenue and expenditures relative to the budget. The district will also make budget adjust adjustments and staffing adjustments through attrition as needed in order to maintain the required reserve levels along with a healthy fund balance. The district will also keep current with all federal and state legislation that can potentially impact the budget. Next slide, please. This is a list of upcoming <laughs> events for our budget. Uh, May 20th being the School Services of California workshop on the Governor's May revision. Then March through June of this year, we will be developing the 21-22 budget, which is already underway. Then on June 10th, there will be a hearing on the LCAP and on the budget. And two weeks later, both will be presented to the board for adoption on June 24th. Next slide, please. This concludes our presentation for this evening. Thank you for your time. And now we'd like to turn the time back over to the board for any questions you may have. Thank you for that, Mr. Jensen. Uh, questions from the board? I don't have questions. I just have a comment. I just want to thank you for the presentation. You all, you, you, Mr. Jensen and Ms. Adabia, you always do a very thorough job and uh, do a really good job in explaining this, you know, the, our financial point, you know, painting a good, uh, the financial picture of our district. So for that, I want to thank you and for the submitting the positive certification. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Member Artigan. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question, um, Mr. Jensen, with respect to uh, obviously a lot has, has shifted over the last year with the focus being on uh, response to COVID. Um, however, something that we talked about a lot before that and still is an outstanding issue are increasing costs to the pension systems for both PERS and SERS. Just curious if you've heard anything um, earlier, uh, prior, again, prior to the pandemic, there was a lot of talk about potential relief coming from the state in some capacity. Again, I think a lot of that's been put off on the shelf because of COVID, but have you heard of anything potentially coming down the pike that might help districts address the, the growing punch costs associated with both uh, predominantly PERS, but I think even STIRS to some extent? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this, and, and you're absolutely correct. Uh, this has been a major burden on budgeting for many school districts. So the, the Cal STIRS rate, uh, even though it is lower pretty much lower than, uh, not much lower, but lower than PERS. It is based on a, a much larger salary base. So it does tend to be the, the one we focus on the most. 
And uh, last for this year, the governor had uh, put a, an influx of money into the pension fund, as well as a reduction of half a percent in the rates for ongoing. Uh, for the 21-22 budget, we have not heard if anything will be done for STRS and PERS, uh, although it also benefited from an influx of money this year. Next year, that's not the case, and the rates continue to, continue to grow about 2 to 3 percent for the foreseeable future. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Um, and again, thank you for the presentation. Uh, again, a very thorough presentation. I know it's a target. It always seems to be, but we appreciate staff's assessment of where we're at and uh, budgeting. I would say conservatively, um, methodically, really, about being careful that we meet our obligations and are prepared for the future. So, I, I really appreciate the, the presentation. Other comments or questions from board members? All right. Well, hearing none, then. Uh, I want to say thank you again for the very thorough presentation. And uh, again, we appreciate the, the hard work that's being done as we try to navigate these waters. And again, we expect that, uh, there are likely to be changes with the May revise. There usually usually are. Um, so we'll stay tuned. All right. Thanks so much for the presentation. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. That concludes our administrative presentations for this evening. So we move on to our action items. We have a number of action items on the calendar uh, today for approval for the Board of Education. And so at this time, I will ask if there are any items that board members wish to pull for separate consideration. Yes, um, I would like to pull 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19, 6.20, 6.21, 6.22, 6.23, 6.
And I'm familiar with this because I was, I had the, the privilege of being part of this training this past year. And I just uh, want to, to just for clarification is uh, we did the training this year and we had a cohort of probably 35, 40 people. And, um, you know, we worked very, very hard to get to the point of, um, of where we're at now. Can you explain um, how, what the next step, just briefly, um, how the cohorts will work? I know we have four cohorts of 30 members each. Is, um, can you brief, just briefly touch on that, on how we will move forward with these cohorts? I, yeah, uh, well, I'll go ahead and defer to Ms. Uh, Dr. Peterson, who has been, um, and I'm certainly familiar with it, but I'll jump in when I need to. Tina, you want to go ahead and answer that? Sure. Um, Ms. Arguin, um, so we are starting uh, four cohorts across the district, and within that, within those cohorts, we'll be another 32 um 32 certificated classified so the teachers uh classified across the district as well as at the school sites as well as the district office and the purpose for those is to bring some of the learning that we did in the dstp to those cohorts so that they will gain that initial understanding of why of what the dstp is and, and the plan we put together they'll be able to give um, the three design teams that we have also working, um, they'll be able to give them input on any, any uh, things to add to the action plans that they're working on. And, and we'll be able to be, um, once done with this, be more people on school sites that have more information and more knowledge about the process. So that as we begin to implement our action plan, um, there are people knowledgeable across the district that can support this impl implementation. That's wonderful. And I, I'm really impressed with the uh, strategic rollout of, of this whole process. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you, Board Member Adegine. Any other questions or comments uh, for staff regarding item 6.5? All right, hearing none, we do have a motion and a second for the item. So I will ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Adegin? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Torino Hayda? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Hara? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And with that, the item, item 6.5 is approved. Item 6.6 .6 was the next deferred item. This is our um, student assembly presentation item. So at this time, I'll ask if there is a motion to approve item 6.6. .6. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. I'll second that, Israel Fuentes. Thank you. Motion by board member Adegin, second by board member Fuentes. Uh, questions for staff, Ms. Adegin? Yes, um, there I, I noticed there are a lot of assemblies planned for uh, at different at various school sites. Um, just like, you know, the, the, that's what's been in place all year, you know, you uh, bring assemblies for approval uh, and they have all been viral. And this is just, I guess, my pie in the sky wish uh, if for if it, it is at all possible now that we're we're um, implementing some spirit days and awards assemblies and um, in, at this in person if there is any way that these consultants would be willing or able or if even if in, even if it's if it's feasible to have some of these uh, in person um, and I know that uh, Mr. Davis uh, working on a protocol to make these things possible. So, um, you know, that's just, just the thought that, you know, that would be wonderful. And, and you know, like I, like I said, it may not even be feasible at this point, but I'll, I would love to consider that. Thank you for that, Ms. Adegin. Any other uh, comments or questions from, from board members for staff? 
All right, uh, hearing none, we do have a motion and a second to approve item 6.6. .6. So at this time, I'd like to ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Adegui? Yes. yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for that. With that, item 6.6 .6 is approved. Our next item, uh, deferred item, is item 6.12. Uh, and this is a letter of agreement with the City of San Diego Police Department for additional security uh, at, I believe it's BHS High School uh, graduation. Uh, this time I'll ask for a motion for approval. Okay, I will so make move. the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. We go ahead and do uh, board member out again uh, motion and Mr. Fuentes second. We got that rolling. Okay. okay. And, and 6, 12 and 13 is basically together, but I, I understand if we need to go in separate, but um, this is for security uh, for uh, the graduations at the stadium. Um, and I know that the county and I understand, uh, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the county has not provided guidance yet saying yes or no that we can. Um, provide um, in in person graduations. Is that correct? That, that's correct, Ms. Adegin. At this time, uh, we we have not received any guidance uh, on in person graduations. Uh, waiting for the county and the okay. department to provide that. Okay, and so we still have the stadium for both of these high schools, for Bloomington High School and Grand Terrace High School. We still have the stadium reserved. And we're all adding this security just to, to continue preparing in the hopes that we continue in this path. We are trying to be proactive uh, in this matter and with our fingers crossed that we are allotted to do this. Okay. okay. Is there a, a deadline as to how, how long we can keep the stadium reserved for these two graduations? Yeah, there there is, uh, and I believe uh, end of April is the, when we'd have to cancel or with um, the 66er stadium. Okay, so hopefully we'll get clearance or guidance from the county prior to that, and and it's our it is our hope that we can proceed with this. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, board member Adegin. Any other questions or comments from uh, board members? Uh, and again, I'll just note, and I appreciate Ms. Adegin for, for making that clarification, because there are some folks that, that have asked um, about whether or not we, we are prepared for an in-person graduation. Again, for the record, uh, we have we have authorized agreements for both Bloomington High and Grand Terrace High School for graduation uh, at San Manuel Stadium, um, where it is normally held, for multiple dates. Uh, and again, this is a component of that. This is putting in place the security measures that would be needed for an in-person. So. In response to the questions that have been asked, if allowed and if possible, is the district prepared to have those graduations? The answer is yes, and that we have done our due diligence in approving those agreements that are required. Um, Ma'am, Mr. Mr. Superintendent, can you please confirm the same is true for Colton High School? The difference with Colton High is we don't need a formal agreement or contract because obviously we host that on campus. So are we still going through the same motions and preparation for Colton like we are with? Um, with Grand Terrace and Bloomington uh, at San Manuel. That's correct, uh, Mr. Flores. Uh, as you know, the Colton High graduation is at the high school, so we don't need to secure an agreement. But we are working with the city of Colton and securing uh, PD for support uh, for uh, security. Great. Thank you for that. So we're, taking those, we're taking those proactive steps to ensure that we're ready. Great. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, well, we have a motion in a second to approve item 6.12. Uh, at this time, I will ask for roll call vote. Ms. Adegui? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Doreen Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. All right, with that, item 6.12 is, uh, is approved. It takes us to item 6.13. It is that sister item that we referenced, uh, Board Member Adegin, which is our letter of agreement with the City of San Bernardino PD for Grand Terrace High School graduation at the San Manuel Stadium. So at this time, I'll ask if there is a motion and a second to approve this item. 
So moved, Pat Haro. Second. All right, we have a motion by board member Haro, second by board member Ibarra. Uh, any comments or questions from staff, uh, from board members for staff? Hearing none, then we will go ahead and uh, ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Adeke? Ms. Adeke? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Corrine Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. Ms. Hara? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, item 6.13 is approved. Takes us to our final deferred item, uh, which is item 6.32. Again, this is here, just want to make sure we have the correct item. Uh, first reading and approval of amendment to our board policy and administrative regulation 6145 uh, pertaining to extracurricular and co curricular activities to extend probationary period for the 2021 school board uh, school year. So at this time, I'll ask if there is a motion and a second to approve this item. I will make a motion. Sorry, for... Ojeda. And I'll second it, Pat Harrell. All right, had a few folks chime in. So I'm going to go with Thorin Ojeda. Uh, for the uh, motion, and I think Pat Haro chimed in to second that. And then uh, I will ask for comments, questions from the board. Please, and I believe Mr. Ibarra, you requested this be deferred. Yes. Please, uh, Mr. What I, thank you. What I'd like to do is uh, ask for clarification on this item. If someone can please uh, elaborate a little bit more of what we're looking at in uh, 6.32. Certainly, Mr. Barr, we'll have uh, Mr. Day to uh, go ahead and, and uh, provide a little bit more clarification uh, on this uh, action item. Mr. Date. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Yabara. Um, so, Assembly Bill 9 allows us to, allows the board, I'm sorry, to authorize the probationary period um, to exceed um, the, the length of a semester just for the 2020 um, 21 school year due to the, the pandemic. And so basically this will allow for any students who were um, on the verge of being ineligible um, to remain eligible throughout the rest of the school year um, and continue to receive the support they need to, to bring their grades up to the level that they need to um, be brought up to. Um, it will expire at the conclusion of, our, of this school year um, and will revert back to our, our traditional policies that are in place um, for student athletes to be able to participate um, at this, you know, that we've used in the past. So it's just an it's just a opportunity to allow students to be engaged um, in in extracurricular activities and not allow the pandemic to further hurt our students in any fashion. Well, thank you for that explanation, Mr. Date. Uh, I've been getting uh, questions from coaches uh, throughout the district, and the question basically is uh, by uh, approving this item. Uh, a student, uh, are we, uh, usually it's 2.0, and now we're just opening it to any student uh, that is below 2.0, or is there a limit, or how, how are we uh, measuring this? Yeah, so um, basically if a student fell below 2.0 during the school year, they will be allowed to participate in all extracurricular activities. Okay, so it could go all the way down to, uh, you know, below uh, like a 1.0 or so, and they're still eligible. Yes, so for CIF sanctioned sports, it's a 1.0. Um, so essentially a student can have a 1.0 and be able to participate. Okay, mm -hmm. I just want some clarification for myself and for others that may also be listening and are interested in that. I thank you very much. Thank you. Member Barra, any other comments or questions for staff? All right, hearing none, then uh, we have a motion and a second to approve item 6.32. So I will ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Adeke? Yes. Mr. Fuentes? Yes. Ms. Sandoval? Yes. Ms. Torino Ojeda? Yes. Mr. Flores? Yes. 
Ms. Haro? Yes. Mr. Ibarra? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Medina. And with that, item 6.32 is approved. And that takes us to the end of our action session items for today. I want to thank the board for that. Um, our next uh, item on the agenda are administrative reports. Uh, and this time, I'll ask if there are any questions from board members with respect to uh, our administrative reports items 7.1 through 7.5. Any questions for staff? Okay, hearing none, we'll go ahead and move on to our facilities update for this evening. And for that, I will turn it over to Director Chang. Mr. Chang. All right. Good evening, Board President Flores, Board Members, Superintendent Miranda. Uh, tonight, just have a brief uh, facility update for the board. Next slide, please. All right, first up is the Colton High School. The uh, NPR building, uh, things are still moving along, not as quickly as we like, but uh, they, we are making some uh, good progress. Um, so on the left are probably some photos taken about two weeks ago. They're completing some of the metal lap installation. On the right, uh, you can see, that, so that has been uh, completed. So they proceeded to uh, start the uh, installation of the uh, exterior cement plaster. So that's in progress as shown on the right uh, photos, uh, two photos on the right side. Uh, interior metal step framing has been completed as well. Uh, and they're also finishing up the, on the uh, interior electrical, mechanical and plumbing item. And uh, also we've been working on roofing uh, for the last about three weeks or so. Um, fortunately, we have some rain that, that impacted some of the uh, subsequent activities, um, but uh, we're, we're getting some good weather ahead and, and we're about 90% uh, complete. Next slide. Please. Mr. Chang, do you mind if we pause for a minute to change out our sign language interpreters? Yes, thank you. Th thank you. Okay, we are all set. Thank you, Mr. Chang. Right, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. All right, uh, just some additional photo progress photos of the project on the left. Uh, I guess what I call the, the electrical plumbing spaghetti. You can see those are all the magic that happens behind all the drywall. You see a lot of fire alarm, electrical, and and uh, plumbing, and, and so those are all that makes the building function. So uh, it, it, it almost looks like a kind of a, a blow up of like a a, a, a microchip. But um, and on the right hand side, you can see the progress of the roofing. We're making good progress, about ninety percent complete, as I mentioned previously. And then at the bottom, we have the HVAC. Uh, systems are ductwork work being installed currently. Uh, next slide, please. That's so nice. Just ask me what you'd like me to do, and I'll try my best to help. Oh, apologize. Somehow I triggered my Siri. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> Technology. Um, all right. So next slide. Just want to give the board a quick update. We've been working on the design for the professional learning center slash boardroom uh, for the past few months. Uh, been working diligently with the architect, uh, as well as collaborating with uh, the city where there's some code issues we've been working on. We don't want any surprises at the end. So we've been working and uh, addressing some of the, the code issues that, as they arise to get some clarification. So we're hoping to uh, uh, have the uh, design um, getting close to, to finalize soon. And so at the, uh, in the near future uh, board meeting, we'd like to present the design to the board for uh, any comments. Next slide, please. So uh, another part of what staff been busy is, is getting ready for students to return on campus. So one of the things we're working on is converting some of the freestanding uh, drinking fountains, utilizing the CARES Act money to these, the, the one in, in on the left, the uh, the combo unit that actually has a drinking fountain, uh, the bottle filling station, as well as uh, a, a hands free a faucet. So we've been uh, doing that uh, conversion for the last uh, a month and a half or so. And on the right hand side, we also purchased these portable sinks that uh, we're actually going to hook up to uh, permanent plumbing. So there's no need to you know change out to fill the the tank and dispose them. 
in the uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so we're also um, we're we're currently actually working with the principals on identifying those locations. We have two currently allocated each campus, so we're going to be walking uh, these uh, sites. The principal, this is the one on the right, which is the mock-up that we've done at Grant Elementary. So we're going to be uh, rolling out the, for the rest of the campuses. And next slide, please. So last slide, just a, a quick update for board uh, on the status of the the latest uh, board uh, project projects. Uh, we've been uh, working on um, establishing a new pool of architects for the uh, the most recent uh, approved project by the board party projects. And uh, so we had actually a pretty successful outreach effort. We had over 22 firms responded. Uh, we probably work about half of these. Uh, there's some other halves that we've never done work before, but um, just based on looking at the responses and some of the reference checks, uh, you know, there there some uh, some good quality firms. So we're excited to uh, to um, to uh, uh, look at the possibility of, of bringing them on as a uh, as a the design team uh, to implement these projects. So our next step is to uh, interview. Uh, so we're going to be interviewing. Uh, about a, a dozen fir uh, firms uh, from the list. And then uh, we're gonna shortlist that to maybe about uh, eight or nine uh, firms, which we will um, submit to the board during the April meeting for approval. This concludes my slide update. Any questions from the board members? Questions from board members for Mr. Mr. Ching? Yes. Do we have any questions? Uh, oh, uh, I have a question. Uh, this is board Please. member Fuentes. Uh, uh, Mr. Chan, uh, just a quick question. It might be kind of a dumb question, but on the new NPR uh, at Colton High School in the HVAC systems, will they also have the filtration systems that we are currently putting in the classrooms because of the pandemic? Yes, yes, we'll have um, uh, the the, uh, the filtration system and also the, um, the needlepoint bipolar ionization system. So we're going to incorporate that as well into the the uh, the building of the system. Awesome, awesome. That was my question. Thank you. That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Puentes. Other questions from board members? All right, um, hearing none, thank you, Mr. Chang, for the presentation. We look forward to the update with respect to the uh, uh, the mod uh, modifications and improvements over at Washington. There's a lot happening over there, and it's exciting to see. So um, we look forward to the next presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, we do not have a business services uh, update today. Uh, we do have an ACE update. So at this time, I'd like to invite uh, our ACE president, Mrs. Parachi, please join us. Hello, esteemed board members, Superintendent Miranda, cabinet members and members of the audience. My name is Christina Parachi. I have the privilege to serve as the president of the Association of Colton Educators. Um, our members are finishing the progress reports, parent conferences, and are getting ready for a well-deserved spring break. The LPAC virtual testing is in progress and it is a challenge. We are still hopeful that the state testing will be waived by the federal government, as we understand that the district or the county can now waive state testing. We are pleased to see that the district is considering offering summer school to elementary students. ACE members work closely with the district to plan it. I've been involved in the union for over 17 years, and in 15 years, I have never seen the general fund combine at over 315 million for CJUSD. The association and the district is at the table negotiating the 2021 contract, and our goal is to finish negotiations in early April so our retirees can see the negotiations benefits before they retire. 2020 was a trying year for all of us, and we would like to make sure that our retirees know what that they are appreciated. Thank you for voting yes on the ACE and District MOU on Kaiser transferring to CBA JPA. 
we look forward to having all our members having the benefit of being in a joint power authorities. Thank you for all your dedication and all your support. Enjoy the spring break. I know we will. Thank you, Mrs. Pranchi, for that for that update. Um, and again, as always, we appreciate the partnership and the collaboration with ACE. Thank you. And enjoy spring break. <laughs> um, we do not have a CSC update uh, tonight, uh, and so that'll take us to Mac update, but I don't believe we have one either. So next item is our ROP update. So I will ask if either board member Haro or board member Ibarra would like to give us an update. Okay. Um... We did have a, a recent ROP meeting, and uh, I'll begin by just saying that uh, the superintendent, uh, Tracy uh, Zapoli, uh, was very uh, appreciative of the fact that uh, our district, Cone George Unified School District, uh, um, shared some of the COVID-19 vaccines with, with her staff. And some of our teachers uh, from Cryrop that that serve our district. So she wanted me to uh, pass the word out uh, back to uh, Dr. Miranda, and and let them know that they were truly appreciative of the of the invite to to do that. Also, uh, they've been very busy over the well over the last few months. And I'll begin with uh, at Cone High School. Uh, there were 12 uh, Cone High School ROP ambassadors who uh, supported uh, the two day Cone Joint Unified School District Family Reading Con as author, as, uh, author ambassadors. And uh, also at Cone High, uh, their graphic communications, the students that participated there are able to increase their engagement now because they now have the software and are accessible to that there at, uh, that allows them to, uh, to uh, do more of the graphic communication type of curriculum that they were hoping for. So they were very pleased with that. And uh, the, the teacher there is identifying that 100% attendance from those who are attending the graphic communication classes at Cone High School. In Bloomington High School, uh, the veterinarian assistant program, the students are, are creating instructional videos and uh, they're conducting what they call diagnostic sampling of uh, samples that they have attained from animals. And they're creating the, the videos uh, to show uh, um, how they they do the process of diagnosing those samplings. And at uh, Grand Terrace High School, the graphic uh, design students uh, are competing in a national contest hosted by Vans Shoes, uh, where the winning uh, school will receive a cash prize for their site and uh, see uh, if their shoe designs are produced. So they're actually, uh, the graphic design are, are actually designing uh, shoes for Vans uh, Shoes uh, Company, and we'll see if they win, and we will find out uh, hopefully at the next board meeting. Uh, Pat, are th is there anything else you'd like to add to that? No, I think you pretty much covered everything, all the good stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dan. No, absolutely. Thank you, Board Member Ibarra. It's, it's great to hear all the activities that are taking place in the classes that continue to take place, again, even in the distance learning environment. We appreciate yep. your representation on ROP. No, it's not. It's always a, a, a challenge to add another agenda item to your calendars, but you represent us well, both of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, next on the agenda is our superintendent's communique. So I will turn it over to Dr. Miranda. Thank you, uh, Board President uh, Flores, uh, Board Members, uh, Executive Cabinet, and all the members in the audience. Uh, hopefully, you're having a great night uh, out there. I think it's a beautiful night. So, uh, I, tonight, I uh, first wanted to start off uh, my communique with asking uh, the Board very humbly and respectfully for a opportunity for a special Board meeting. Uh, and so, first, uh, 
the, I want to thank the board for approving action item 6.5. Uh, so, Shane, if you want to move on to the next slide, please, would appreciate that. There we go. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you again, board, for approving uh, action item 6.5, which is the agreement with uh, NCEE. Uh, and so, I will uh, explain what that means. Uh, as I mentioned in board correspondence, uh, we're proceeding with the next scope of the work uh, through the National Center on Education and, e and Economy. So, we're moving on to what's called systems design benchmarking, SDB. Uh, so, as noted uh, in uh, board correspondence, uh, systems design benchmarking, uh, what we're going to do is get in, uh, create teams, uh, and those actually have been established already, and they are designed to build uh, on the capacity of the district uh, systems design partnerships, which is Ultimate goal is to create a vision, develop a vision for the district for for years to come. That north star, if you will. So uh, we are uh, in now going to move forward with that in uh, in the uh, the SDP process, systems design benchmarking, excuse me, and provide support and feedback on a larger scale. So we want to scale this work out uh, and necessary for uh, what we're calling redesign. Uh, additionally. Uh, the board uh, has been invited to various sessions uh, uh, and will be invited or has been invited already. Uh, so you'll see those on your calendar for the four cohorts that have been established. So uh, again, uh, I want to thank the board members who have participated uh, in this in depth process. Ms. Uh, Adegin, Mr. Fuentes, they've uh, been participants of the uh, DSDP, the uh, system design uh, benchmarking. Uh, is uh, is next, like I said, so uh, we're, we want to engage the whole board in this process. So at the special board meeting, uh, we want uh, obviously the entire board to hear firsthand what that means. What's what's the next steps in, in this work that we've been engaged in for over a year and two months and even during the pandemic had the work has not stopped. We've engaged with our friends uh, from ACE, from CSEA, uh, members of the community, uh, just uh, all our stakeholders have been part of this process. So uh, the uh, two dates that I'd like to propose to the board for this special board meeting uh, is uh, Monday, April 12th or Tuesday, April 13th, so that we can engage the rest of the board in, uh, in this uh, work that we really are uh, feel that it's really going to propel our districts to the next level. So, uh, board president, uh, and I didn't specify a time, but I would uh, recommend as always, uh, 5 30 start if that pleases the board. Well, all right. So, uh, is there a consensus or thoughts on whether it would be Monday this 12th or Tuesday, April 13th? Is there a preference? Uh, I just had a question. I just had a question. Um, Please. That week, same week we have our regular board meeting. And normally we don't do special board meetings the same week we have a regular board meeting. That thought out or is. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just asking a question. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, and uh, if the question is directed at me, Ms. Uh, Haro, uh, we did consider that we felt that because of, uh, the spring break, uh, that would that first week of April would be a tight, uh, uh, would be too tight for the schedule to prepare for that uh, special board meeting. So that's why we considered that week. I know that it's uh, it's it's a pretty tight schedule there, and so that's why we we suggested that yeah. we wanted to get it early in early April. Dr. Miranda, is there a time sensitivity to this? Uh, there, there is because we wanted to uh, get the board's input and engage the the, the board in this uh, before we roll it out to our management team, which it would happen, I believe, uh, the we want to get it out to the management uh, the nineteenth or twentieth. Yeah, or yeah. So there, there is, uh, there's, there's some some time sensitivity on that. Uh, but uh, if um, 
uh, we we just you know there could be some. I'm trying to think. We want to we want to get a rollout to the management on the I believe the twentieth. I believe we can. Uh, you know, so that's why we we felt that that was probably the best time, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, understood. I'm fine with I'm fine with uh, uh, either date. I was just wondering if we thought about that because that's also a cry rot meeting that uh, that week too. So I was, yeah. So that's why I was asking. Um, but that's fine. I'm fine with the 12th or the 13th. If that if that's the board's it, it does just to clarify, or it doesn't conflict with prior up, right? The, no, days. there's on a Wednesday. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you get to have three meetings. Yeah, three yeah. meetings in a row. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, yes. That's Mr. why Torres, I would like to recommend um I prefer Monday if that's possible, if the board would agree to that. Uh, certainly, any any objections to holding the meeting on Monday, April twelfth? No, Monday's fine for me. Okay, um, that works for me as well. So it sounds like there are no objections to Monday the twelfth, uh, and so let's go ahead and plan on having that special meeting on the twelfth. Then, Dr. Miranda, thank you, uh, board, and appreciate that. Um, and my apologies to the. The board about having three meetings on that week, uh, and so um, we will. We're giving them Tuesday them. off. It's all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so moving on to the next slide here. Uh, so thank you. Uh, so uh, the board is aware. I'm part of the uh, the San Debs uh, group here, which is the San Bernardino County District Advocates for Better Schools, and I have the honor and privilege of representing. Uh, our district in this uh, very uh, active group. Uh, and so last week uh, I participated at a meeting with other surrounding superintendents. There are many bills that are being proposed and reviewed by uh, the group in particular. I also shared a very important bill, AB 438, uh, which is regarding workers protection for all school employees. Uh, and I wanna keep the board posted on that and the outcome of the bill. I also uh, shared a video uh, from Kevin Gordon, who is from Capital Advisors uh, to the board. Uh, so he provided some really good uh, updates uh, regarding uh, the recent bill, Assembly Bill uh, 86, which is also a sem uh, Senate Bill 86, uh, and it was signed by Governor Newsom. And what it, what it does, and what he t uh, Kevin Gordon talked about was the 6.6 .6 billion package that was signed by the governor that allocates about 4.6 million for schools for extended learning and intervention, uh, which is being used for actually for our summer school session, tutoring, extended day, uh, which is very promising news. And we know that our students need a lot of supports, especially in this kind of environment. And then uh, furthermore, uh, I wanna make, uh, and the board's certainly uh, aware and uh, about the recent bill, the stimulus bill that the president signed which is providing additional 25% for a learning recovery uh, and 7 billion to uh, uh, states for 7 billion for technology. Uh, so we, we're really excited about uh, those funds that are going to the state uh, and, and we, we will uh, be uh, planning the, the use uh, of those uh, funds uh, that will be coming uh, pretty soon uh, here to the district. Uh, and so I just want to make sure that I keep the board updated on the, the uh, most pressing items that Sandep is working. I know that Friday uh, we are meeting with the legislature um, and just advocating again for our schools, for our district and for our, our county. So next slide, please. I also wa want to talk about um, ACES, our Think Together program. Uh, they will be providing uh, a spring break program. It's going to be virtual. Uh, so Ed Services, Educational Services, uh, uh, is pleased to announce uh, that uh, ACES uh, will be doing this virtually. The theme is, uh, as you see it there, uh, learning virtually under the big top, which is a, a this theme. This is going to happen during spring break uh, for our elementary students. Uh, and uh, the program is going to offer uh, is offered virtually again uh, 
through the 21st century grant that we have uh, at our nine schools, uh, Bernie, Crestmore, Lincoln, Lewis, McKinley, Roger Smith, Wilson, and, and Zimmerman. So uh, while the program is hosted at the nine elementary schools, we're able to offer the program to all elementary school students. And this, so again, this is virtually. Uh, last uh, thing that I have, or not yet, if you don't mind, I'm moving not yet. Uh, the enrollment, just give you a little bit more information of this program, because I know we have the community. You can go back, sorry, I jumped too soon. So the enrollment is uh, first come, first serve basis. Thank you. Uh, and um, it is limited to the first 75 students uh, per funded school, so for the nine schools. Uh, and again, it's this is a program that's going to be hosted by our ACES partner, Think Together. Uh, and the times are 9.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. for the entire spring break, which is from March 22nd through April 2nd. Uh, excuse me, March 20. Yeah, I said that right. March 22nd through April 2nd. <laughs> and uh, will include, include a, variety a variety of activities for students to engage in learning as well as uh, a kit of supplied materials for each participating student. Information is posted on our website for all those uh, links for enrollment for parents. Uh, next slide, please. So, very, very excited to again, um, report back regarding our fourth annual reading con event. So if I can get the next slide, please. There we go. Thank you so much. So, as all of you know, um, you know, li reading literacy is so important for for all kids, especially our little ones, our elementary kids. So, on March third uh, and March second, uh, our district hosted our fourth annual family reading con event virtually. Uh, and I just want to commend our communications department, Jackie, Paul, and Katie Orla for hosting this great event. Uh, we had some amazing. Uh, authors, crafts, superheroes, and more. And it just, I was able to jump in and actually read to the kids that, and that really, and I know some of our board members did that too. And so that was so much fun. So I wanna thank our board members who were able to participate. In fact, you see some of our uh, authors there and uh, reading to our kids. So I just thought, uh, just thought it was an amazing event. And again, thank you to uh, our students and our families uh, for participating. Uh, reading is near dear to my heart, uh, and it's uh, one of the reasons why I'm been able to be successful. So I encourage all of you to continue reading. Uh, so thank you for that. And then last slide, as Ms. Parachi mentioned, spring break is upon us. Uh, so. Uh, you know, we had the hashtag CGSD cares. Uh, we got to take care of ourselves. Uh, all of you, our teachers who have been working so hard. Uh, it, yeah, I can't even imagine, uh, you know, you guys are, are need this break. So as we uh, spring break starts Monday, March 22nd, and again, it goes through April 2nd. And so I just want to thank uh, the staff for all your hard work. Uh, and would like to reiterate to to staff again that uh, please try to take some time to rest and enjoy uh, your time off with your families and friends and uh, just uh, and know that as the economy is opening up, you can go out there and and uh, do some uh, things outside. Uh, so I also uh, our staff who have been working tirelessly and who have been going above and beyond. Uh, I just want you to know that Colton Joy Unified has some of the most dedicated employees, and I wish our staff, uh, again, uh, please take time for yourselves. So, again, on behalf of the board, uh, executive cabinet, uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for your commitment to our students and our families. Uh, so, that is uh, all I have for tonight, board president, so I will turn that back over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. We appreciate the attention. Uh, next item on our agenda are board member comments. And at board this President Morris, can we pause for a minute, please? Oh, sure, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. No problem. 
Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, begin with board member Ibarra, please. Okay, thank you uh, very much. And uh, just want to say that uh, uh, with the uh, spring break coming and uh, it's incredible how quickly this school year has flown by. And uh, typically, if you've been involved with education for years, we all know that once spring break comes, the, the, the remainder of the school year is kind of a quick downhill slide and uh, to the end of the school year. But I just want to say thank you to all the, the teachers, staff, administrators, um, all the parents and students that have uh, have pretty much weathered this whole year uh, of uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, type of education. And uh, with the uh, two weeks coming of uh, vacation, uh, well-deserved for everyone. I just want to wish everybody a, a, a restful and safe uh, spring break. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, working through the end of the school year as we prepare for our summer uh, elementary summer school camp and the opening in uh, in August, if everything goes well. So with that, everyone take care and good night. Thank you, board member Iparo. Uh, next, I'd like to call on board member Florian Ojeda. Thank you, Mr. Flores. A couple of comments tonight. First of all, I'm very excited that we're going to be able to provide uh, the summer school program that we uh, that we saw the presentation from tonight. I know it's been a tough year for boys and girls and for families, and I think this will kind of help us transition back. Hopefully by that time we'll have more herd immunity and we won't be so concerned about uh, the numbers, even though they're okay. And they're still, we're not out of the woods yet. And I know it's really hard for people to understand, but, um, we really have to do what we think is right. And I will say that as well, exactly what I've done and our board has done. So um, so I'm excited about summer school. And, um, and I wish them very good luck for that program. I wanna congratulate the, pro the people, the employees of the month that we honored tonight and our community members. And um, I want to say, have a wonderful vacation for each of you. Please follow protocol so that we don't end up having a super surge. Uh, we don't want to go back to where we were at the beginning of last year. And with that, enjoy your vacation, everyone, and boys and girls, if any of them are listening, we do want you back pretty soon, and it's going to be a good time when we do get back um, to some semblance of normal. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, board member Theron uh, board member Adegine. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, first of all, um, with uh, Mr. Dade's office uh, working on protocols to encourage and, and for schools to um, be able to offer activities, whether it's spirit days or awards, um, I would, uh, I'm really excited about that because that's going to allow kids and parents, you know, to be physically on campus to participate. And I know that the pr protocols are very important. Um, I know that schools are going to be submitting proposals uh, to the to Mr. Date's office. So I'm excited about that. And one thing that again, I'm going to go with my pie in the sky. If there is any way that we can somehow start opening our libraries not opening you know officially opening but just maybe just being able to open our library so that parents and kids can come and check out books um, that would be that would be awesome um we received as a, a board members we received a lot of quite a few um requests or or uh, inquiries about the use of our fields for soccer and i would it's possible um, 
and if we need a consensus, can we see what can be done about that and if, see if, if staff can, can look into this? Do we need a consensus on that, President Flores? Uh, I, I think what we can do, yes, we can certainly ask for consensus. I think on that matter, that's probably more of a matter. I'll, I'll obviously refer to Dr. Miranda, but if I'm not mistaken, that's a little more of an administrative matter with respect to uh, the health guidances under whatever respective tier. But yes, it probably would be good to have consensus if we'd like some information on that. Um, that okay. could be brought to us in board correspondence. Uh, I don't know that it requires any action down the road, but Dr. Miranda, can you? Can you confirm uh, if that is something that you can provide an update to the board on? Uh, certainly. In fact, uh, we already engaged in that process. Uh, uh, and Rick Owen, uh, we're looking into the facility use, uh, uh, working with our uh, ASKIP, uh, which is our insurance carrier, uh, to uh, look into possibly allowing uh, the field uh, use. Uh, by our community groups. So we will provide information and board correspondence to the board uh, and um, get that info to the Board of Education. So we're working on that as we speak. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And the last thing I have um, is, is I just want to acknowledge and, um, you know, our maintenance department, our classified staff, you know, every department, the office workers, the uh, security, nutrition services, every, I mean, uh, our classified staff is the backbone of our, of our district. Um, and so I just want to let, let all the classified staff, how much we appreciate them and how you know, we understand how difficult <laughs> it's been for you as well. And, uh, and we appreciate all the work you're doing to prepare our schools to reopen. So thank you so much for all your work. Thank you, Board Member Adegui. This time I'd like to call on Board Member Haro. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you. Um, I have a few things I wanna bring up. Um, I would like to uh, see if, um, uh, I know we have scheduled graduations currently for Colton High School to be held at the high school and the two at San Manuel based on the county's recommendations at the time. And we have the several dates. And I would like to um, also propose that if we are not able to, because the county says we can't have that type of a graduation, if um, obviously we did drive through graduations last year for the high schools, uh, I would like to continue with something um, for, for that for them um and but i would also like to add to that and uh add to uh promotion ceremonies uh drive through if possible however for the middle the middle school and for the sixth graders um last year students were off school from march through the end of the school year and um those students uh, missed out on having a promotion ceremony um we were able to do drive through graduations for the high school. This year, students have missed out on a full year. I think that those sixth graders and those middle schoolers, they deserve to have uh, at least a promotion ceremony. Uh, and like Ms. Arreguin said, also maybe an award ceremony, whatever it is we need to do to make this year uh, somewhat special for them. This is a special time for them, sixth grade and middle school. So I'd like to see that uh, we could look into doing that. I also um, want to bring up the fact that um, I don't know how other school districts up north have been able to uh, do a waiver for that cast testing. I know that President Biden has said that they're requiring school districts to do the waiver. I don't know what all is involved in that, um, but um, I, I don't, I, 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 I guess, um, I don't understand why there is such a push for it. Uh, you know, the tech problems, the teacher stress, and the results are not gonna be valid. So um, I don't know if there is a way for us to look into that. 
a waiver to not do them. But um, if we could just get some information on yes, no, how it worked, what would happen if we did that type of thing, I would appreciate it. Uh, I also would like to um, congratulate, I, I received a list of winners for the SIMSEF award ceremony. Uh, we had an elementary, I had uh, an elementary school student uh, win a bronze medal. We had a senior student win a bronze medal. We had a silver uh, award medal for an elementary student. And our gold medal winner this year was uh, Ava Ferkness from Terrace View Elementary. So I just wanted to congratulate the four winners uh, from the Colton District. Um, and then the, la uh, the uh, last thing I wanna bring up is, um, I, I, the, my fellow board members know and the staff knows that I'm a huge proponent of the arts. And um, I'm getting uh, emails from various arts teachers in our district because of that. And um, I know we're doing everything to get schools ready and schools are getting their, their PPE and all of the different things that they need. However, the arts departments are not getting that help. Uh, PPE that's required for arts department, they need special types of masks. They need covers for their instruments. Um, they need tents if they're gonna have to do outdoor rehearsals. Um, there, there's so many different things that, the, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize, I've been ill, <coughs> excuse me, that the arts department needs to, um, continue when we start in August uh, to keep a quality program going at all of our high schools. So um, I would like to find out, uh, and, and you know, if we wait, the longer we wait, you know, other districts are, are buying these, these uh, items for their departments and it's gonna take longer and longer for it to get here. And I don't, our, our students have been through enough as all of our students, and our arts students are no are no exception. And when they come back, they should have those items available so that day one, they can begin their education, their arts education. So I would like to ask um, the district to look into why these items are not being purchased for the high schools and when they will be purchased for the high schools. So um, I would like to uh, mention that. And um, <clears throat> so I, just uh, thank everyone um, so far through the school year for everything that they've done to, uh, to make it as successful as we possibly can. Um, I want to wish everyone um, tell them to enjoy their spring break. Take time for family. Take time to rest. Take time to rejuvenate. Um, we know it hasn't been easy for our classified staff, our, our teachers, our management. It hasn't been easy for any of you. And, um, you know, we keep saying unprecedented times, but it truly has been. And you truly deserve to have a restful time with your family. So God bless each and every one of you and have a wonderful spring break. Thank you, Board Member Harrow. Like now I'd like to call on Board Member Fuentes. Thank you, Board President. Well, first of all, thank you for coming out this evening uh, virtually. Uh, I'm, I'm very appreciative when uh, you come out and uh, are out here listening to our uh, comments and uh, listening to the board and all the good stuff that's coming to our district. Just wanted to acknowledge a couple of things. Uh, I think some of my colleagues have, and I think Superintendent has already acknowledged some of them, but our reading con, I had the opportunity to go out there and read to our kids and we had lots of fun. Every time I come out to uh, to read to them, especially during Read Across America, I always like to wear my little Mickey hat. I always tell them, hey, let's put on our reading hat and uh, let's read. So I enjoyed doing that with the kids and I think they had a lot of fun and they also brought their own hats and they were able to read with me. So I wanted to say, uh, say uh, to Jackie Paul and uh, Katie and everyone involved on the reading con, thank you. That was very successful. I had lots of fun. The sessions were great. 
uh, the authors, the puppeteers, the heroes, the superheroes that were there. It was an enjoyable time, so I had a lot of fun. So thank you. Thank you. Can't wait till next year, our fifth annual uh, uh, reading con for next year. Also, uh, the wellness fair at Colton High School, uh, they had a three-day wellness fair. Wow. If you didn't get the opportunity to participate in this virtual event, you missed out on something awesome. Uh, we had a lot of great sessions on yoga. We talked about relaxation. We talked about how music uh, makes a difference in, in, in our mental health and all of that. So it was a phenomenal three days. I had the opportunity to be there for all three days. And we had a lots of fun. There was questions, there was prizes. I mean, there was phenomenal, phenomenal things were going on. So I had lots of fun. I want to thank Mr. Alvarez. I want to thank uh, Ms. Fregoso. And I know I'm missing the other people that were involved. Ms. Murphy, Principal Murphy also. Thank you very much for putting that out there. We had a great time. I want to thank the ASB, uh, Colton High School's ASB, the leadership out there, and all the students that were out there as hosts presenting the uh the sessions and all of that, you guys did an awesome job, and I'm very appreciative of this. Can't wait till next year. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it face to face and uh, have that much fun. But virtually, you guys did an excellent, an excellent, excellent job. So thank you once again. Also, wanted to acknowledge my Cooley Ranch ambassadors. I had the opportunity to speak to the Cooley, uh, Cooley Ranch ambassadors about leadership, talked about leadership with them. Uh, Ms. Torres, Nina Torres, who leads that at uh, Cooley Ranch. We had a great time. We learned, they they, they presented uh, themselves to uh, me and everything, and they did a great, great job. And also wanted to acknowledge that Assembly Member Eloise Reyes uh, presented each and every one of those uh, leaders there at Cooley Ranch and Mrs. Torres uh, recognition from the Assembly. So. I am uh, very excited and uh, to see how the empowerment is going on with the ambassadors there. And uh, thank you, Mrs. Torres, for all you do. Uh, also, <clears throat> I'm excited about summer school, the adventure that's coming up. Uh, the presentation was great. Mr. Uh, Dr. Hyder was great. I appreciate that. And I'm excited to see that we have uh, that going on for summer school also. Uh, you know, every opportunity that we can get for our students to learn, to participate, to get involved in something, I think that really helps, especially during this pandemic where, you know, a lot of us were at our homes. A lot of times we just need that little bit of time to get, get out there and do uh, exciting things. And I know Think Together is going to do great with that also. And also wanted to acknowledge the dual immersion. I'm excited about dual immersion. I know we have two new schools coming up with dual immersion this coming school, uh, new school year. And I'm excited about that. Thank you, Mr. Diaz, Ms. Alejandra de la Torre, for all the uh, good work that you're doing. And I'm very appreciative for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, to all em employees, uh, the employees that receive recognition this, uh, this evening, congratulations on the hard work that you've been doing in our district. And I really, really everyone of you to say everyone in our district for all the hard work that you've done during this year and uh i know it's not been easy as many of my colleagues have said and myself it's not been easy but you know something we've done it we've done it we're here we're at this point and we've got to continue moving on moving on i want to leave you with a quote this evening let me bring my notes here it says family and friendships are two of the greatest facilitators of happiness. Have a great spring break. Enjoy your time with your family. Hug one e one and each other. And if, uh, because you have the opportunity to be able to do that in your immediate family, enjoy your time, get some rest. God bless you, each of you, and have a great night. Thank you, Board Member Fuentes. Uh, Board Member Sandoval. Yeah, hi, no, no comments for today. Thank you. Thank you, Board Member Sandoval. And uh, I just want to start off by thanking uh, everybody again for all the hard work that has gone into uh, preparing and implementing um, strategies and programs in a year that's been like any other. 
Um, I can say certainly in my time on the school board, I've not experienced a year like this. I think uh, other board members, including board member Ibarra, who's been on here for well over 20 years, can probably say the same thing. This has been a year unlike any other. Uh, I do feel compelled to say, uh, well, first of all, let me begin and let me say thank you to everybody that has submitted comments, um, whether it's through public comment here at the meetings or whether it's going to be an email. I think all of us have received a lot of feedback from parents and community members. Uh, and we encourage that. We want to hear from everyone. The fact of the matter is, uh, this is a very diverse district. We have 22,000 students. And all of them come from families that have unique backgrounds and experiences, and all of them are experiencing this in different ways. And the fact of the matter is the decisions that we make here at the school board certainly aren't going to make everyone happy. That is not our goal is to make everyone happy. It's to try to make the best decision possible for as many students and families as possible. It's important for everyone to remember that we all experience this in different ways. And so for some families, the decisions that we make are going to suit them very well. And for others, it may be uh, more of a challenge. And we know that um, we are doing the absolute best that we can given difficult circumstances, limited resources, guidances changing weekly from the state and at times the feds. Um, and I, we want to hear that feedback, but I also feel compelled to say that uh, there have been times that that feedback that has come to us has been certainly less than professional and in some ways downright ugly. Some of the emails, some of the feedback, and again, I'm not saying this to complain or whine, but we're elected officials, we're professionals, we're politicians, we're accountable to the public. There's no question about that. But we're also a community. Every single one of us on this board lives in this community. Every single one of us either has children in the district, had children in the district, grandchildren in the district, and or have committed our careers to education. I have three children in the school district. And I know they're all in elementary school, fourth grade, second grade, and kindergarten. Trust me, I know full well the impact of the decisions that we have made. I live it every day along with my wife. I have seen my fourth grader struggle. I have seen the frustration in my second grader when the technology fails. And I know that my kindergartner student who should have started the school year on campus on her first day of school will never truly get a real kindergarten first day of school experience. The decisions I make impact me, my family, and all the families in this district. That is not lost on me or any of my colleagues. And what I would ask is that if you have a concern, if you are upset, if you're passionate, which you should be about your students and about what we're doing, yes, reach out, please. But I would ask for some grace and, and patience, or at least an understanding that others are experiencing this in different ways. And there are difference of opinions and there are different approaches. No one is necessarily better than the other. In fact, they're all imperfect in some way. But to be told that we don't care about children, to be told that we don't listen simply because we don't do what you want us to do. We've heard all of those things. And, and even the veiled threats about if we don't do what somebody wants, we're going to be run out of office. I've worked with this board long enough to tell you that the people on this board are going to do what they feel is right first and foremost. And any politician who values their elected office more than doing the right thing shouldn't be in office anyway. So I encourage everyone, please, you know, Yes, let's work together. Let's communicate. Reach out. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to be critical of what we're doing. But how we communicate with one another sets an example for our children and the children in the school district. If we want them to do better, to be better, to model the character, the integrity, then let's have a dialogue. Let's have a conversation. Let's, a, let's disagree. But let's do so in a way that sets an example that we can be proud of for all of our children. Let's rise to the occasion. Let's not seek to go to the basement and throw mud, but let's work together in a way that's constructive. And again, uh, I know that we haven't made decisions that have made everybody happy, and maybe we've made mistakes. I'm sure we've made mistakes. But correcting those mistakes and working, finding a way to work together is really um, the approach that I think all of us are looking for. So, again, I just, I felt compelled to share that because this is something that impacts all of us directly, myself included, because again, 
I have three children and in this district that are experiencing this and, and it's, it is difficult. And there's no question about it, but um, I will continue to respond to every email that I can to, to calls and to the input. And I hope that people will continue to reach out and do so in a way that's constructive, that's productive uh, and respectful both ways. So with that, uh, that's the last of our board member comments. I want to thank everybody again for the feedback and the input. Uh, and now we are adjourned into closed session. So we'll see you guys in closed session. Thanks so much. Alvin and Vicki, thank you for your assistance this evening. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. you. Too. Shayna, do you want me to text you when they come back from closed session? It may be a while. Uh, that would be great. Sure, no problem. I could get some dinner here. Go get some dinner. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> We're back. Hey, Tina. Well, or you we are all back. back. Good. I shouldn't awesome. say we're all back. We are coming back. Good, good, good. Awesome. I was actually working on some stuff right now. Have everybody back, Joanne? Can you count six? Let's see. So we have Miss Ad we have Miss Adigi, Mr. Flores, Mr. Ibarra, Mr. Fuentes, Miss Joanne Thorino Heda, Miss Sandoval. I uh, count six. We're missing Miss Harrow. Okay. We'll just give it a few seconds. I'm sure she's logging in. Okay, sounds good. All right, not sure she's having difficulty, but I'll tell you what, since these are really uh, readout items only, we'll go ahead and proceed. We do have a quorum um, since all the action was already taken. So I will uh, reconvene the meeting for uh, today on March 18th. For the Colton Unified School District Board of Education, we have a couple of readout items for the public. So item 11.1 .1, under personnel public employee appointments. Uh, on a motion by board member Fuentes and a second by board member Sandoval, and a, uh, on a 7 0 vote, the board approved the following appointments one certificated uh, member, three certificated coaches, one classified management, seven classified coaches, eight volunteer coaches, and one volunteer as listed in the agenda. It's recommended by staff. And again, that was a unanimous vote. Okay. Item 11.2 on a motion by board member Ibarra and seconded by board member Thorin Ojeda. The board appointed Dr. Anthony Ortiz, the director of the human resources division for the district. And that was on a 5 2 vote with board members Fuentes and Haro dissenting. Got it. All right, that is all we have for tonight's meeting. Thanks, everybody. It was a long one, but we got a lot done. So I appreciate it. Everybody get a good night's sleep. We'll see you guys good soon. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night everyone. Early. Good Have night. a great spring break. All right. Yes, enjoy spring break. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Night all. Everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Night. Everyone, enjoy your vacation. Those of you who are taking one.